So today we're going to learn about how to solve rational uh, exponent equations. So the first thing that you want to do is basically to leave the part that you have to the power 2 over 3 by itself, okay? So in this situation, what I would do first, it would be to divide by 3 both sides, okay? So here you would have, you cancel the 3 here, so you would have x plus 1 to the power of 2 over 3, and this is going to be equal to 4. <clears throat> After that, what you need to do here is you need to, um, basically, uh, either you can do the, the 3 over 2 or do step by step, okay? So in this situation, what I would do <clears throat> here is I would raise it to the power of 3, Okay, so you can see all the process since it's the first example that we are seeing. Okay, this three exponent cancels this um, one third that we have over here. And then you have that this is going to be x plus one to the power of two, and this is going to be equal to four to the power of, 60, uh, of uh, <clears throat> three, that is going to be 64, okay? So once you have this, you can get rid of the square by using the square root property on both sides having um, the square root of this and the square root of this having <clears throat> x plus 1 equal to plus minus and you know that the square root of 64 is 8 okay so from here you just clean it up having x is going to be equal to uh, negative 1 plus minus 8 now you have your two x's, negative one plus eight, uh, you know that it's going to be uh, negative, uh, <clears throat> it's going to be positive seven, excuse me. Negative one minus eight is going to be negative nine, and that's pretty much it. I can just, uh, you know, use the nice notation that we use, and that's it for this one. Uh, now let's move on to one that we need a little bit more operations to solve my situation. <clears throat> so for number two, what you have is negative three. Parenthesis x plus four to the power of five over three plus one equals 97. So the first thing that I would do for this one, it would be subtract one here and here. So you are going to have that it's going to be negative three x plus four to the power of five over three and that's going to be equal to 96, okay? So once you have that, you are going to divide both sides by negative 3, okay? Because, remember, your goal is to leave all this part first by itself, okay? So you cancel this negative 3 with this one, having on this side x plus 4 to the power of 5 over 3, and this is going to be equal to negative... 32 okay so we have this situation here after that uh, you can do the power of 3 first or not depending on the case <clears throat> okay so what we have here and I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do I have this to the power of 3 and this to the power of 3 okay so you cancel this two so you have x plus 4 to the power of 5 this is going to be equal and you recognize that negative 32 is negative 2 to the power of 5 <clears throat> so you have this equation right after that you want to get rid of what you want to get rid of this 5 okay so you can take the fifth root or you can just raise both sides by one fifth. Okay, so if I raise it to one fifth, which is the same as the fifth root, as you know. Okay, so this they cancel, so you have x plus four, really beautiful on this side. Now on the other side, what you see is that you have multiplication five times three divided by five. You can cancel the fives, pretty nice. So you have that that is going to be equal to negative 2 to the power of 3. You see it? So that one, you're like, well, that's not an issue. No, it's not. Why? Because you know that that one, let me rewrite it, x plus 4 is going to be equal to negative 8. 
10 and you're like, wow, that's so simple. Yep. So you have x is going to be equal to negative 8 minus 4, which you know that that's going to be negative 12. And that's pretty much it. That's your answer. Okay. So it's going to be uh, negative 12. Okay. For the next one, what we can do here is since now uh, we have done it one by one, we can do everything in one. Okay. So you can do 5 over 2 and 5 over 2 here as the exponent. Now, you are all happy trying to eliminate everything, but you need to be careful with something. Here we have, a, a, we're eliminating a square, okay? A, a square root, we're taking, this is the square root. So uh, when you cancel this out, just be very careful that you are going to have the plus minus on the other side, okay? So here I can convert this nine and I have the plus minus because this two and this two. So when they are even, you need to, <clears throat> the denominator is even, you need to have the plus minus, okay? So here I'm going to manipulate my nine. You know that nine is three square and then you have five over two. These twos, you know that you cancel them. So you have X is going to be equal to plus minus three to the power of five. <clears throat> 3 to the power of 5 is going to be 243, okay? And that's going to be your answer. So you have for this situation two answers, okay? Plus minus 243, and that's it, okay? For the fourth problem, what you need to be careful is that we have this one half over here, okay? So what we are going to do is first, before we uh, deal with the exponent, we're going to multiply both sides uh, times 2. Okay, to get rid of this guy. Okay, so you have x to the power of 5 over 2 is going to be equal to uh, 32. Okay, uh, so here you can realize that 32, I want to rewrite it as 2 to the power of 5. Okay, um, so um, we have the situation. Now you want to get rid of this, but again, you need to be careful because that is a square root, okay? So when you do it, when you do the two over five, remember that we have that beautiful plus minus, okay? Um, so here you cancel this two, you cancel this two, you have that this is going to be x, you cancel the five, and this is going to be 2 to the power of 2. So actually, we don't need the plus minus because you know that um, the power of 2 is always going to be positive uh, because it's an even exponent. Okay, so that's going to be a 4. And technically, we are done. Okay, so uh, you have this as for your only solution. Okay, now. You're going to tell me why in the world would you even put the plus minus 4? Okay, let's say that you have the negative uh, 4. When you plug the negative 4 here, that's going to be negative. Okay, whatever you have that is negative 4 to the power of 5, if you take the square root, that's non-existent. So uh, we, we technically, that, that one is not going to be a solution. Okay, I hope that you see it here. Okay, otherwise you can plug always a negative 4 inside your original and it will give you that it's no solution. Okay. So <clears throat> always go back to basics for that one, okay? If it bothers you, you can put the negative four and then you plug it in and you realize that it doesn't work, okay? So uh, for this one, what we have here is you have a x to the power of one over three equals four x. Okay, so uh, for this one, you're going to tell me what are we going to do? Well. I always prefer to work with integer exponents and clearly this one is not an integer exponent. So what I'm going to do for both sides to work with friendlier numbers, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to raise both sides to the power of three. Once I do this, three is a good number because you know it's odd. So I can just cancel them naturally. So I have X to the power of one or just X is going to be equal <clears throat> to four X uh, cubed, excuse me, okay, which you know that this is going to be the same as, um, let me write it down, x is going to be equal to 4 times 4 times 4, you know that that's going to be this beautiful number 64x cubed, okay, uh, so in this situation what I would do, and you know that I love to have my leading coefficient positive, I would have 0 is going to be equal to 64x cubed minus 3, Okay, I move this one to the side. 
do not divide both sides by x because then you would be getting rid of one of the solutions and you don't want that okay so move this x to the other side here it's pretty easy to see that you can factor one of the x's so you have that it's going to be zero is going to be equal to x times 64 x squared minus one and the cool thing about this is that you're like oh wait last semester we were doing uh you know perfect squares and indeed this is perfect because you know that eight squared is 64 x squared is you know x squared and negative one well you know that one square is one so this is pretty cool because you know that this is going to be x times 8x minus one <clears throat> and then you have 8x plus one okay so it's pretty neat okay once you are here you are like okay so i equalize each one of my factors to zero so you have x equals zero then you have 8x minus 1 is equal to 0 then you have 8x plus 1 is equal to 0 so you already have this one the next uh, the next one that you have you know that it's going to be x is going to be equal to 1 over 8 this x is going to be equal to negative 1 over 8 and then you just state all your solutions so you have the 0 and plus minus 1 over 8 and that's it for this problem. For problem number six, since I'm running out of space, I'm going to bring a piece of paper, okay? And I'm going to do it here, okay? So we don't get confused between six and five, okay? So the first thing that you realize for number six is that we need to subtract five on this side and on this side. Why? Your goal is to leave this piece by itself, okay? So you have 3x minus 3 to the power of 2 over 3 and that's going to be equal to negative 1 plus x okay so at this point you are like okay sounds good um i want to um raise it to the power of three both sides to get rid of that uh three that we have here so you have 3x minus 3 square is going to be equal and i'm going to rewrite it as x minus one cubed okay so you are like now what well i'm going to tell you okay so let's be patient i'm seeing that this three is a common factor so i'm going to have that three times x minus one and everything to the power of two is going to be equal to x minus one cubed okay now, since we know a lot about the laws of exponents, I know that this two affects the three and this two affects in the same way the x minus one. So you have that this is going to be nine x minus one squared and this is going to be equal to x minus one cubed. Now that you're at this point, what are we going to do? You know that I'm obsessed with having my leading coefficient positive. The one with the highest exponent is this guy. So I'm going to pass this one to the other side. So I have zero is going to be equal to x minus 1 cubed minus 9 x minus 1 squared okay so at this point you realize that these two terms because this is one term this is another term they have something in common and something very important in common so you have that they have both x minus 1 square in common okay so if i already took the x minus 1 square from here i just have x minus 1 left and here i took the x minus 1 square that i have here so i only have left the 9 okay so i only have that part now i combine the like terms that i have in this factor so i have 0 is going to be equal to x minus 1 square times x minus 10 okay so at this point, you are like, wow, this is basically uh, like we were doing back last semester. Yes. Okay, so you are going to uh, have two factors in this situation, which you equalize them to zero each. Okay, the only thing here you need to be careful because that, that square, okay, um, that square, well, it's going to be nothing. So you know that that is going to be x equals one it's just a double root okay you know that one is a double root that's the great thing and then you know that x minus 10 is equals zero it's going to give you that x is equal to 10 so you have that your two solutions are going to be the beautiful number of one that it's a double root and 10 okay and that's pretty much for this problem for problem number seven what we're going to do here is that you can immediately uh, raise it to the power of two over three okay which 
looks nice okay so you're like okay I can do it immediately two over three here and two over three here okay so the only thing that I would uh, ask you to uh, basically wait for is uh, this okay so you can tell the twos you can tell the threes and you have that it's 2x squared minus 5 and this is going to be equal you know that the 8 is 2 to the power of 3 okay which remember you have it to the power of 2 over 3 okay so um, <clears throat> at this point you can cancel the threes so you have that it's 2x minus 5 is going to be equal to um, 4 right okay and after that you're like oh this is, became a quadratic equation yes plus 5 plus 5 so cancel it so you have 2x squared is going to be equal to 9 okay that one is a nice number right so what are you going to do now you divide both sides by 2 without complicating your life too much uh, after that you know that it's going to be um, well, so far we have this in case that you're wondering and then I'm going to uh, square root both sides when you square root both sides remember we're using the square root property so you want the plus minus okay so if you want the plus minus there you know that that one is going to be the square root of 9 is 3 then you have the square root of 2 I just um, I'm just going to uh, rationalize here. So you have that, obviously we don't like, so you're going to rationalize as you are pretty good at. So you have plus minus and you have three root two divided by two, meaning that your answer for this one is going to be plus minus three root two divided by two, okay? So that's for problem number eight. I'm going to write it in a separate piece of paper because it's kind of longer, okay? So I have that number eight is going to be x power 2 minus x and then you have minus 22 everything to the power of 3 over 2 and that's equal to 27 so the first thing that i can see as soon as i uh, as i write this one is that this 27 i know that that 27 is 3 um to the power of 3 okay so i have the same okay on this side and then you immediately you want to get rid of that 3 over 2 that's fine okay we can do that we can raise everything to the 2 over 3 on this side and 2 over 3 on that side okay you can sell everything on on the left side having x squared minus x minus 22 that's going to be equal and you can sell the 3 so you have a 3 squared which is 9 okay so after that what I'm going to do, I pass the 9 to the other side, having x squared minus x minus 31 is going to be equal to 0. Then you have a quadratic equation and you're like, okay, can we factor? And the question is, well, no, because that negative 31 is not a friendly number. So what are we going to use? We're going to use the quadratic formula. Okay, so I have that x is going to be equal minus minus 1, which is 1, plus minus the square root of negative 1 squared minus 4 times a which is 1 times c which is negative 31 everything inside the square root and everything divided by 2 times 1 okay so you have this situation uh, I have that it's going to be 1 plus minus the square root and that's going to be a 125 divided by 2 you know that I can simplify this a little bit more as 1 plus minus 5 root 5 and everything divided by 2 but here we have an issue at the beginning technically this is a square root and from the previous unit you know that when we have square roots we need to check your answer so I need to check both of my answers if I stop here I know that at this point I know that my tentative solutions are going to be 1 plus minus 5 root 5 divided by 2 so I have tentatively 2 okay so first I'm going to check okay so 4x is equal and I'm going to do the positive first 1 plus 5 root 5 divided by 2 
what I need to have, and remember you are going to plug this in your ori original, so you have that your original is uh, x squared, so you have 1 plus 5 root 5 divided by 2 squared minus x, which is 1 plus 5 root 5 divided by 2, and then it was minus 22, then close it to the power of 3 over 2, and the question it was, is this equal to 27? And you're like, wow, that's kind of like a lot. But you recognize that we can, uh, by having this square, we can expand this, okay, as what? 1 plus 10 root 5, okay, plus 125, everything divided by 4. Okay, on this side you have that this is going to be minus, and you have 1 plus this, Okay, and then the minus 22, and you keep asking the same question, is this equal to 27? We don't know yet, okay? But you recognize, I cannot combine these two because they don't have the same denominator, but I can make this 2 a 4 if I multiply top and bottom times 2, okay? So if I do that, let's go up so we have more space, so you have 1 plus 10 root 5 plus 125, and then... You have that this negative, you have negative 2 minus 10 uh, times root 5 and everything divided by 4. And then you have the negative 22 here at the end. Okay, so you have this situation. And here you have an answer to the question, is this equal to 27? Okay, so you start canceling stuff, okay? So you combine these like terms. Okay, so you have 124 divided by 4 minus 22, 3 over 2, is this equal to 27? And you're like, what? Okay, so you know that this is going to be, I'm going to continue here. Okay, so you know that 124 divided by 4 is 31 minus 22, that's 9. 9 to the power of 3 over 2, is this equal to 27? And the answer is yes. Okay, so you already know that this one is an answer. Okay, now let's check the other one. Okay, uh, the negative one. Okay, so similar, it's going to be pretty similar. Okay, so 4x is going to be equal to 1 minus 5 root 5. Okay, and everything divided by 2. So I would just do it the same. 1 minus 5 root 5 divided by 2 squared. Minus 1 minus 5 root 5 divided by 2. That one is normal. Minus 22, everything inside the 3 over 2, and is that equal to 27? Okay, so now you expand it, now you know the trick here, so I'm going to skip that step a little bit. I expand this one, so you need to be like, okay, so this is going to be 1, and that's going to be minus 10 root 5, and then the last one is going to be plus 125, and this is going to be everything divided by 4, I'm just waiting, right? This one I'm going to multiply times 2, so it's going to be negative 2, and negative and negative, positive, positive 10, root 5, and everything divided by 4 here. Okay, so it's that chunk, minus 22, 3 over 2, is this equal to 27? And you're like, okay, so let's cancel stuff and things. Okay, so you have this two that cancels. Then you combine, and surprise, surprise, you have the same, 124 divided by 4 minus 22 to the power of 3 over 2 and you're like wait this is the same as before so I, I really don't need to question it anymore this is true okay therefore what are your solutions well if you want to put your solutions here all pretty you just put your solutions it's going to be 1 plus minus 5 root 5 everything divided by 2 and that's it for number 8